guys at Mine are always talking about testing and training and testing and training. What is the real importance of that? Why is that such a big deal? Well, I, I think that's a really good question, Rebecca. And the, the main reason why is that they are tied together for most automation system life cycles. Um, you need to be able to have this offline simulator be able to test the application software thoroughly and completely. You need to be able to test things that you would never want to test in the operating plant. Um, interlock conditions, uh, valve tracking, uh, loop tracking, uh, responses to different things in the control system application software that, that in the real plant would be just too expensive, uh, dangerous, or would, you'll never get operations to agree to, to allow you to test that. But then at the same time, once you, the control system engineer has tested that and is, and is confident that, it's, that his control upgrades or his enhancements are working correctly, you want to train the operators on how to use it. So the step between testing and training needs to be a walk down the hall to get the operations staff in and show them what you've implemented. It's so important to make that happen. And most simulation solutions in the industry are really focused around high-level operator training that don't allow you to test the control system because in many cases they in order to make the simulator work they've modified the control system to a point that it doesn't necessarily closely resemble the real plant and so testing on that isn't really going to do you much good and so while you may have a training application, you can't go through this point of making enhancements and modifications to your control room or to your control system, testing it and then train your operators. And I know you were talking before that uh, you see that a lot more chemical engineers are very interested in instrumentation upgrades and control system, even maybe just looking at advanced control or different control strategies. Uh, and I agree, being a chemical engineer too, because for the cost of the capital, it's a very inexpensive way to make huge changes to the way the plant is run and to get some great value out of the, uh, of the plant. Um, you got to have a mechanism and a system to be able to let the control system engineers or the process engineers experiment with the control system and see if they can make changes to the control system application software that they can then test in a realistic offline manner and then train their operators on. And so this interaction of testing and training is, is just very important. So in this scenario we were talking about before the right. distillation uh, column, you might have some, you would probably, most likely have some testing of the system leading up to that operator training. Right. And depending on what the operator uh, encountered in this training scenario, you might go back and do more testing, or you might sure, or you might go back and change your control strategies. You know, how many times do you go through that? And you know, somebody goes through a control system modification, they change, they build a new control strategy, and they test it, mm -hmm. and they think they they've got it nailed. And they bring their operators in, and the senior operator says, you know, son, this will never work. You know, or, or ma'am, this will never work. You know, because. Uh, because they haven't, the, the operator has incredible knowledge of the process that uh, maybe even the process engineer does not. So, but if it's in an offline virtual bed, you can go back and make modifications or sit down with the operation staff and say, what can we change to make it more effective here? And then retest and retrain. So the whole aspect of testing and training is, is really a, just a great capability. And that's what we really focus on with, with MIMIC, is give the, uh, the plants the ability to have this a virtual plant, control system, and uh, process simulator of MIMIC, that they can really uh, get greater value out of the plant by, without making a lot of capital investments. And is this testing and training ability much more possible with this newest release? Or um, has that just been something that's been a fundamental aspect of MIMIC? You could do it before with our old versions of MIMIC. Uh, it just wasn't as easy and quick. And, uh, and it wasn't as easy to make uh, changes and modifications. And you couldn't uh, make as good a process models. And the whole aspect of doing 
uh, of having a, um, a quantifiable measurements of your uh, operator training scenarios as a brand new function with version 3.1. So if you look at what we've done with Mimic version 3 overall, we, you know, simulation is the same, whether you do it, with, you know, you can write good simulators in Fortran or you can do them in the latest simulation program out there. We're making it easier, quicker, more flexible and more intuitive for the user so more people can be, can use the simulator and then we've also made it so operative training sessions can be more repeatable and more measurable. Now would you, most in most cases, would this be used for one operator at a time or in some kind of a, a multiple user training session? Well that's a, that's a really good question because we see both. You see uh, where you have individual training, you see team training, mm -hmm. where you'll have like an operations staff come in and you'll set up your offline control system to have multiple workstations with you know, dual screen monitors, just like you would see in a modern control room. And then you also have individual training where you'll have one instructor working with eight, 16, or maybe just four or five operators, and each operator working with the exact same virtual plant and, uh, and, and simulation. And Mimic supports all those different architectures. In fact, one of the things, again, in 3.1, we just made it real easy to make, to take a simulation you develop to, to go with one operator and then to all of a sudden copy and paste it and have it going to, to eight operators. So it's um, individual team training, we support all of it. And how much time would it typically take um, for someone to learn how to just to use Mimic? So, you know. Do you have to spend a lot of time with them, training them to use Mimic for training, or is it relatively easy? Well, we, we really built, we tried very much with version 3 to make it very intuitive and very easy to use. And even with version 3.1, we've, we've gone through and, and made modifications where we've made things more intuitive. Uh, a lot of intuitiveness in software is flattening the application so you don't have multiple windows and you can do more from one place. Um, so there's a lot of things we've done there. Uh, majority of users of Mimic pick it up and run. And we have a lot of documentation on our website that allow them to do that. There's formal schools done by our partners like Emerson that are great, very well done as well. Um, we also provide services. We've had, uh, we've sent out simulation consultants uh, to uh, all over the world to show people how to write process models and how to implement their Mimic system. And uh, usually within a week, we can show them how to write some pretty good uh, dynamic models and, um, and they're ready to, to, to go and um, conquer their process. So it's, it's a pretty quick thing. Okay, well thank you very much. Well thank you Rebecca, it's great to see you.